Yo, it's your boy AJ. I'm here with Rage. We're about to break down this Suns versus Bulls game. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. You're now tuned in to Hoops World. Hoops World. Right here, the king is like, hey, guess what? I'm still the king. I, I hit the streets just to get a bag. I pack, he got toe tagged. I punched the nigga for shorty. I'm John Woo with the 40. You not gang, nor the homie. Fine, don't bro. me, no, you don't know me. Gang shit, numbers only. You wasn't there, I was lonely. You wasn't there, I was lonely. Dog nights, blicky on me. I was just stacking my commas up. Head down, trying to run it up. These niggas be steady, be clocking me. Yes, sir. So the Suns versus Bulls, man. We got the pleasure of watching the Suns versus Bulls tonight. Uh, now in this first quarter, oh my God, Josh Okogi. What a first quarter for Josh Okogi, bro. This first quarter, I think he had 13 in the first quarter. Devin Booker was very hot in the first quarter, but overall the Suns offense in this first quarter was just spectacular to watch. Um, they were just getting open looks for Josh Okogi in that, in that, um, in that corner. Devin Booker was on fire, and then I think KD, I think, had an early seven or five or six points in that first quarter. Talk to me about that first quarter. What would you feel about uh, Joshua Kogi, man? Hey, he was attacking. He was hitting his three-pointers. Uh, yeah. Early in this game, you were able to see KD's gravity. Yeah. He was able, Joshua Kogi was able to get a lot of open shots, and so was Devin Booker. I mean, yeah. everything yeah. looked perfect. Offense was great. Even the defense was fine. You were able to get what you wanted, right? When, when KD came on the court, you were instantly, instantly – Everything looked good, right? Yeah. You you think this team still has to gel, and you're automatically you're instantly seeing a yeah. team that's like it's it's like perfect continuity. Like yeah, everything but... looks perfect on a team that hasn't even gelled yet. You still got you still got a, you still got games left. The system looked great. I mean, like I said, the offensive system looked great in that first quarter. So they were smoking. Um, I think they had forty. It was forty twenty eight in that first quarter. So forty points in the first quarter is what you want to do if you're a team playing in a, if you're in the NBA right now. Um, but that second quarter lineup, we've seen Coach Monty go to this, and I, I wrote down the second quarter lineup. It was KD, Campaign, Damian Lee, Landell, and Baisley. So KD actually got to run with the second unit today. And we've seen the Suns kind of lull a little bit on offense, and the Bulls made a slight run in that second quarter. Um, this is where I think the Bulls kind of got back into the game, I think, uh, with this second quarter um, lineup. Now, I think KD... Katie's still getting adjusted. You can tell he's still getting adjusted to the offense. He's still getting adjusted to everybody, where their spots are going to be. But it, it just in that second quarter, the Bulls did make a run, and it was the game got a little bit closer. Now, the third quarter is where we got to talk about because the third quarter, what happened to the Suns in the third quarter, bro? The, I mean, Chris Paul did a, hit his first shot until I think it was like six or seven minutes left in the third quarter. Talk to me, Rage. How did what happened to this there? Why did the Suns look like this in the third quarter, bro? Well, their problem mm -hmm. was that in that run that the Bulls had, mm -hmm. KD wasn't out there, and yeah. it showed. It, it showed his impact. But also, when KD wasn't out there, the offense was stagnant, and they were just kind of chucking up shots, and they were yeah. getting, and the, and they were getting a little lackadaisical out there on defense. That that was all. That was ultimately the problem. DeRozan mm -hmm. was killing. And they weren't able to really get any shots. They were kind of just, like I said, they were just chucking stuff up there. Yeah. Obviously, you weren't able, you weren't able to really get any scoring off of CP3. Yeah, and yeah, that was really the problem there. Now on CP3, it's like because I we know CP3 is the point god, but this is probably why Suns fans are gonna be kind of like shaky. Like, yo, CP3, we're gonna need you to score buckets because let's say KD and Devin are kind of cold one night, and DeAndre Ayton's not might be hit, but you gotta give us something i mean you're gonna give us 11 assists 11 assists is a guarantee from chris paul 10 and 11 assists are guaranteed but the points it's like as a suns fan you gotta worry about that sometimes bro it's like is chris gonna give you at least at least 10 at least 10 or 12 points with his 10 assists you need some type of double, double digit from chris paul because it just showed and this is a bulls team which not i mean they're good but they're not they're kind of mid. I'll say, what is that fair to say? They're mid. Yeah, they're they're a mid team, and they're not even that good defensively either. Yeah, I mean, Donovan yeah. Mitchell dropped seventy one on them. Yeah. Um. Now with Chris Paul, it's like, is he like I said, is he going to give you that double digit scoring? But then in the fourth quarter, you know, Katie. Well, when they put put Katie back in that lineup, it just flowed again. The Katie's gravity, like Rage was saying, it helped a lot. And then there was getting more open shots for Devin. And again, Devin went off tonight. How much Devin had tonight? I think 35 points. 35. 35. Yeah. Devin was just getting to his spots tonight and he was hot. So when Katie got back into on the floor, 
it just kind of opened everything up because I think, like you said, it, with him not on the floor, it's it, the it, it, and you know what? This is another thing that Suns fans got to worry about because watching the Suns, DeAndre Ayton. Now that KD is on the team, he kind of gets lost in the sauce a lot, bro. Like, he's just there sometimes. Like, he's not a impact. I guess he's, I mean, we know he's going to lose some shots, but it's like, what do you do with him now? Because it's like, you got Chris Paul setting up Devin, you got Chris Paul setting up KD, and then Joshua Kogi gets his own sometimes. But DeAndre Ayton's kind of like the odd man out. So it's like, what do you do with DeAndre Ayton? You know? <laughs> To yeah, that, that 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 is an ultimate problem that you have to worry about because you have you you have Devin Booker and you have Kevin Durant, yeah. right? How you you have two of the best scores in the NBA, yeah. and you have Chris Paul who's going to set those guys up. And you like you said, DeAndre Ayton's the odd man out. Yeah. DeAndre Ayton also has to ultimately figure out what he wants to do, and he needs to get himself open for for good looks. Yeah, right. Got, that, you got you yeah. got to that that's what you have to do because say say Devin Booker is having an off night or even Katie. Right. You yeah. have to you have to go to you have to go to DeAndre Aiden because we know he's gifted on yeah. the offensive side of the ball. But it the, it's it's been a problem as well. He isn't getting a whole ton of touches. And if he isn't, yeah. he only took he four kinda shots. Gets, he kind of gets lost. He took four shots, two he and had four. More he was off of free throws tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Seven points. So it's like and then he rebounds, three rebounds. You can't come on, dude. DeAndre Aiden's got to give you more than three rebounds, bro. Um, but hey, like I said, 20 from KD, Okogi 25. Chris Paul ended up, you know, getting his 11, 10 assists, and then Devin Booker, 35. So they ended up – oh, Damian Lee had 10 points off the bench. So they ended up getting that Chris Paul scoring. But, again, this is a Bulls team that's not good defensively. What happens when you play a, a good defensive team or a, a tough Western Conference team where you got to, you know, Chris Paul – Yeah, and how do you to, figure you know, out Aiton against those teams? Exactly, exactly. So they're still kind of – like I said, We'll, we'll talk about the pros and cons of the Suns game because they ended up blowing out 125-104. The positive of the Suns game is, like, you got one of the two generational scorers on Devin Booker and KD. You've got probably a high-powered offense, one of the best offenses, you know, in the game right now. But the cons, what are the cons of that? You Getting DeAndre Ayton fit into the offense. Chris Paul um, scoring. Chris Paul scoring. The death. So that second unit, because you saw the second unit tonight, didn't really give you that oomph, you know. They were they were complete. They were really lost without KD. And I also and I want to get into the bull side of things real quick. Yeah. Um. Obviously, they were they were able to come back, and it was obviously from the help of DeRozan and Levine. But yeah. what do you do outside of those guys, right? Because yeah. you you get you did give up one twenty five. That was a that was huge issue. But the thing was, you didn't have anyone score out. You didn't have anyone really score double digits outside yeah. of DeRozan. Levine and you had Vucevic, right? You had 13 yeah. out of Vucevic, and everyone else really wasn't scoring like that. I mean, you had yeah. you, you had like a, a little two. over you had a little over 20 from your bench. Yeah, it was really, really bad. Yeah, this is wow. Yeah, it was really, really bad from the like we'll we'll talk let's talk about the Bulls because the Bulls 31 from DeRozan, Vucevic 13, 27 for Levine. It's like if I'm a Bulls fan, I'm like, bro, this team wins, they give me some couple of good wins, and then they fall back into that. Damn, we're back into that mid, you know, and then they just signed Patrick Beverly. He only give you two points. He's not going to give you like, buckets, and their problem, the problem yeah. is scoring outside of DeRozan and Levine. There really isn't any help there because you yeah. have you have you have Kobe White off the bench playing twenty one minutes. He got three shots up. Yeah. That's it. He went one of. I three. guess Dasumo would be the guy who you would look to score. Or yeah, Kobe but White he, is... he even he wasn't really attacking like that. He just yeah, he wasn't. wasn't he, he was. He just wasn't in there. They were just. It was. They were feeding to Zach and DeRozan, and they can only get you so far as a team. And all around them, they shot thirty percent from three tonight. They were seven of twenty three. You can you can only ask uh, DeRozan and Levine from so much. And I watched a little. I saw a little bit of the Pistons game when they played, uh, when the Bulls played the Pistons. And Zach Levine had a bunch of points, but had no rebounds and no assists. Literally, yeah. that's a two K stat line. Yeah, see, so yeah, if I'm a Bulls fan, I'm gonna need more. I'm gonna need a third option. I'm gonna need more for the bench to be successful and try to push up in those standings to get into the play in. And I'm just, and I'm else. ultimately wondering what their future holds at this point because you're so like trade deadline passed. You made no moves. I don't. They, their only, their only buyout move was Beverly. I mean, how much, how far can you really go with this team? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you guys for joining us again. Make sure you guys put in the comments what team do you guys want to cover next. Make sure you hit that like button. Um, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Hoops World Zero. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching.